It's the 10th of July and I know I haven't done a video for a little while so I thought I'd wander you around my garden. So this is how our peppers are doing. Look at those beautiful purple colours in the purple chilies, And we've got some nice bell peppers forming. Ram's horn. Early yellow. And then we've got some more along here. In fact, this early yellow is probably ready for harvesting. Um, we have, I have again attempted melons. They're running along the back. They haven't produced anything yet. And then we have some more beautiful chilies. Now these are actually rainbow chilies, and you can see here that that one's ripening up and has gone to an orange colour. And then on here. We have some more chilies growing. This seems to be a mixed pot because I've got an early yellow in there and a, and a bell. So I think that was a quick plant the leftover plants pot. <laughs> so those are my peppers. The herb ball is doing well along here. We've had a number of herbs off of here for cooking. We planted some um, lettuce in there as well. Mainly that lettuce has gone to the goats and the chickens. Ground cherries are coming along here. I still don't see any particular sign of anything. A few little, little flowers. But this is the furthest I've ever got with ground cherries. So, oh, we have flower blossoming there. So this is this is a good step forward for me anyway. This is the tomato leftover um, pot, as was this one. And this one's got the tomato growing on it. There we go. Oops. See? So not bad for a tomato leftover pot. <laughs> Uh, our peas, our, our last minute, last thought peas are growing up and flowering now. So I really don't know what happened to this bed here. Everything seems to be in miniature. Nothing grew up higher than, than here. Even these tomato plants. I have no idea what's going on in this plant, in this bed. Um, I might have to dig that out and see what's going on underneath the earth when everything's over and done with. Look at these Amish paste. I mean, look at the size of that tomato. And there's a few of them on there, which is wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. First time growing these. I'm, I'm really quite pleased at the moment. Um, these are the unknown variety of Chinese rainbow tomato whatever that may be <laughs> and we have some tomatoes here growing which is wonderful to see um, this is our Amish paste here and I had to pull had to pull one out today that had blight it's been blight has been hitting the tomato garden this week it has been so wet and I've been pruning away like crazy, trying my best to try and um, keep it at bay. But we have lost four plants to blight over the last couple of days. Um, this is meant to be Amish paste, but this looks like heart paste. So, But it's my first time growing them, so I'm not quite sure. These are the ones that I am desperate so desperate to get some tomatoes off of because these are our little white tomatoes cherry tomatoes that we grew last year and i loved pieces and um it i've lost one of these to blight it looks like there's another one going there and another one going there so i may actually not manage to harvest any white cherries this year i may actually end up losing all of them 
These are our red zebra. And um, these are coming along well. Can you see those lines in, in the skin? That's a miscellaneous um, beef steak, which has ended up being accidentally put in there. Oh, that one's got some beautiful markings. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Uh, what else have we got? We have got the chocolate cherries. So we've got a few chocolate cherries coming up here. There we go. These are the yellow cherries. And again, we have some yellow cherries on the go. Still plenty of flowers, not so much fruit. It's been such a wet year and not enough sun. Um, this is the blue tomato. We have got a few little ones coming in the back there. These are our bee steaks. I need a little bit more pruning in here, I think. Um, but they're coming along. I've got quite a few, actually. Last year, I could barely grow one bee steak. So this year is looking very promising. My first go at growing tom uh, tomatillos. And I'm not exactly sure how to prune these guys. I might have a go at that later on today. If we look at our squash, we've got some nice squash growing up this length in this bed, which is lovely to see. Plenty of flowers, but nothing actually to harvest off of there at the moment. So this is my other long squash bed, and it's just, <laughs> nope, it's not happening on this end. I have no idea why. One year I had a lovely harvest off this side of the garden and so I continue to lay a bed down here and I continue for the last two years I've just ended up planting plants struggling to keep them alive and then ripping them out so I mean there's a bit more life down that end these were ones that were put in a bit later to replace the ones that had died they're really not doing anything so those courgettes are not really doing very well um, but let's have a look at our other squash bed so this is the section of the garden that we we call the extension because this was the panic it's a COVID, it's covid we need to plant more food and so we just i just extended the garden into this section so in this section, we've got uh, corn growing here and over there. We've got two beds, one either side. And then between the corn, we've got some beans growing. They're doing okay. We've had a little bit of harvest off of them. Nothing great. And then round, we've got squash, which apparently loves this area of the garden. So... Unlike the other side of the garden, where it seemed to be struggling a little bit, we have squash growing around this bed. This raised bed in the middle here is more squash, which is going crazy. You might be able to look at, see that better from, a, from in front. So there we go. This is all squash here. All, there's about four or five different varieties of squash in this bed. Um, I'm intrigued to this little mini squash here that's um, growing up the front of it. Um, here's the other bed. The squash on this bed not doing so well. They are, go they are coming along, but it doesn't look as crazy green over here as it does on the other side. Um, this is one of our child beds. Again, it's another long bed, and this bed has not done well at all. Um, I grew these chard in here along by seed. I'm not saying that it isn't going to do well. It, I'm just going to leave it. They're healthy. They're just tiny. Uh, and chard will quite easily grow through 
um, the rest of the year so it may be that this is just going to be our late crop we'll see how that goes further in the year so over here we've got our bags of of potatoes I've already harvested one bag of potatoes that gave us a couple of meals which was wonderful um, it was probably harvesting it a little bit too early but I just I couldn't wait I needed new potatoes on my plate um, you can see by the yellowing here that there's a bag in there a couple of bags in there that need to be harvested now um, the rest are still growing quite well this is our brassica bed so or hedge so all the way along the edge of this he, uh, this fence here we've got brassicas growing um, and, and, and just all varieties so you've got the at the back there's cauliflower and broccoli and then there's kale and uh, Brussels sprouts and then there is cabbage at the front so we'll see once the potatoes have been harvested that will give those a lot more space but over here it's quite quite a jungle and mainly of squash so I'm really pleased so I think next year I'll dedicate this area over here this has worked really well in fact I have never harvested a corn and this is doing really well for corn so I think next year I will dedicate I won't worry about doing the chard over here and I will dedicate this area and make the beds a bit more efficient and just do corn and um, and the squash and some beans. People ask me what do I do about slugs and bugs and insects and things and I don't. Um, there's only two of us in the house. I haven't quite got into preserving yet. I'm hoping I might be able to do some preserving this year. What we've been, what I've been focusing on is trying to encourage all different types of insects into my garden. So the little insects will be eaten by the bigger insects, which will be, be eaten by the bigger insects, which will be eaten by the birds. And I can tell you there's a lot more birds in the garden so given the fact that there's a lot more birds in the garden I'm hoping that they are, as most animals, drawn into the garden by a food source. And in the front garden they don't get a food source, so there is only the insects. This is my carrot bed. And I ha these long things, by the way, that look like little triffids, they are leeks that I left in from last year and they are... One started sprouting up and I was intrigued as to how it would turn out and look these beautiful flowers so <laughs> I've failed to harvest the leeks but I've gained some absolute beautiful flowers I would never have seen had it not been for leaving them in um, I'm basically with my carrots I'm basically thinning them out by harvesting what I can. I don't know if this is gonna give me anything. Oh, just a baby. They're not that big. Um, hopefully when I've thinned them out a little bit more, I'll be able to um, be able to get some big carrots. But what I will note is they aren't that big at the moment, but they are for the first time straight and I've been growing carrots now for the last couple of years and I have failed to grow straight carrots. <laughs> so the difference this year was that I did break up the soil in this bed because I don't, I do a no dig method so I don't really touch the soil, I just put stuff on top of it. But this one I just stuck the fork in and just wiggled, stuck the fork in and just wiggled and I just broke it up a little bit all the way along and then I put a thick layer on the top of new compost and then I sowed 
Um, some of them are transplants. So this long, this this section here was a transplant. This section here was planted directly under a board, and this section here, all of this section here, was planted just directly seeds into the ground. The difference with this end was that the rain did disperse the seeds, so we didn't get an even spread of seeds because there was nothing to protect them when it rained. Um, the boards definitely helped i thought it slowed down the process to be honest with you i wasn't too impressed with the process but now further down the line i can see that they did hold the seeds in place and this is one of the squash that i i planted three squash down each side of each of these arches not many have survived i l took my eye off the ball there i think and i which is a shame because I had some wonderful squash growing over here last year. Um, so my peas. So they are now on their way out, as you can see from the colouring of the, of the leaves. We've had um, a lovely harvest off of them already this year. We had some uh, Monge 2 to begin with and then we had one lot of peas and now which unfortunately we seem to have eaten most of. Um, and now we've just got this last lot, which hopefully this weekend they'll be ready to harvest and then we'll pull out these plants and give the squash more space to grow. So here is a new variety of squash for me. Um, looks like it's something else, doesn't it? Uh, and I've put, one, I've put a, one on each side. I have no idea what the squash is like. This is growing well, so once the peas are out of the way, it'll take over. This squash here has survived, which is wonderful, so hopefully that will grow up as well. That one, as I've shown you already, is doing well. <laughs> this one, bless it, is struggling to get through. We might find some space for that. Uh, here's another one. I must have gone crazy with this one. Here's another one of these. Oh, and we have another one here. So they are finding their way through. They haven't died off. They haven't, so that's good. I have lost the one that's in this side here. Oh, here's another um, tomatillo and ground cherries. A couple of sunflowers. These have been randomly thrown in every now and then. And you'll see nasturtium growing absolutely everywhere. If I haven't planted it itself, it's self-seeded from last year. These are the chard. I am so impressed with this chard bed. So, when I planted these in, they were just minute little seedlings, not, not very big at all. And then I put the plastic bottle over them, and now it's just an amazing jungle of chard with the odd nasturtium. Just look at that colour, it's just so vibrant. I just, they're beautiful. They're far more attractive and definitely more heat tolerant than the spinach. I had spinach growing here as well. And I pretty much, as soon as it was big enough to eat, I was pulling it out because it had bolted due to the heat. The chard is far more tolerant of the heat. Here are some more peas that will hopefully be harvested this weekend and then I can pull these out. Uh, no squash plants survived there. There's one squash plant there, another one of those. Those are clearly going to be my squash plant of the year. Oh, and that's made it all the way up there. Have to be careful of that when I'm pulling out the peas. Uh, uh, I don't know if this one's gonna make it. It is in there, I'm just not sure. Um, this one here again, this one, and it's made it all the way up to there. This is gonna be the squash of the year. The squash that I planted there didn't make it, and there is, doesn't look like it's making it, it's, it's barely there, and the one that I planted there isn't making it. I have got a backup plant I could put in, so I may put it along here somewhere, maybe at the end. 
more tomatillos and ground cherries and sunflowers and flowering leeks. This was meant to be my um, beetroot bed, but they didn't grow. Um, we've got some growing, but they should be ready to harvest now and they're still way off being ready to harvest. So I don't know whether I'm going to get anything from them. I'll leave them in. I've got some leeks to go in this bed. So, and it looks like the straw bales that were used to pad out the bed have uh, started growing. <laughs> so I can weed those out. These are actually um, broccoli that was left from last year and some cabbage I think that was left from last year that I just didn't use and I was going to pull out ready for planting in this bed and then I didn't have anything to plant in this bed so I have just left them growing and I just take the leaves off and I give the leaves to my chickens and to my goats this I have no idea what this is anyone have any idea what this is when I see a weed and I see something growing that I didn't plant I do get intrigued I don't always rip them out sometimes that's not going to focus is it <laughs> come on let's have a focus on these flowers we focus nope that's a shame um, so yeah sometimes I like to just let a weed grow to see what the flower ends up looking like after all the more flowers you have in the garden the more pollinators you have so not all weeds are weeds these however seem to grow up everywhere so these we do get rid of but it, again it's a little bit of with a little bit of ground cover at the end of the day it keeps the moisture in the ground I don't want them to take the nutrients but um, but I also want to keep the, the moisture in the ground I don't panic about weeds I should probably weed more than I do <laughs> here's a bed of weeds so <laughs> <laughs> this was this were these were um onions from last year and I haven't really touched this bed this year. I wasn't sure whether the onions were growing and I just didn't didn't get around to it. Um I'll be dealing with my onions uh probably in the next month and then I'll have a look at these beds and see what needs to be done with them. Obviously I've got some onion hopefully some onion seeds coming. I don't think my autofocus is on my um camera today and there's the other onion bed so yeah just a bed of beads weeds weeds so I also this year I also um added some peas along the front fence here as well as the miniature peas going all the way along that fence and we've had quite a bit of a harvest off of here thank you goodness because the goats got out and <laughs> managed to take out some of them and there's just a few left that need to be harvested so that I think that pretty much concludes my garden the medlar fruit tree has got no fruit on it the plum tree had one plum earlier on that was barely growing and now I can't even see that so I don't know what happened to that the cherry tree has had nothing on it this year we had cherries on it last year I was looking forward to cherries on it this year and then the apple tree has got some apples on it they never get very big, but it is they are growing. Uh, the blackberry bush has got no blackberries, very, very few flowers on it. The raspberries, um, I, they, I saw them growing, and then I came out the other day, and that's them. They've all dried up. I don't know what's going on. I've got to cover this area because my blueberries are just beginning to change colour. Uh, red currants, nothing on them this year. 
white currants I've got a few and black currants are doing probably the best they've done <laughs> they didn't do much last year and I've got a few on there my gojo berry nothing this year but it is only a year old that plant more potatoes down the front of the garden these are my in-ground potatoes along here and they go all the way along the front fence here in two lines of bed all the way the, along the front fence over there one line of bed so they're still looking nice and green and strong there's nothing that's a little bit of discoloration but nothing ready to harvest there so I look forward to harvesting those so this is my arch the arch I got so excited about the fact that I had grown this year and I was really looking forward to having things grow up and over the the arch I see it on other people's YouTubes and I'm really embarrassed to say that this height here is as far as anything's got growing on that side pretty much every plant that I planted in there has died and on that side there's more of a bushy growing along here but nothing has grown up the trellis I might have to go in there and just no I was gonna say just tweak it and just get it to grow up there but it just doesn't it's not they're not they're not growing upwards the the plants are just not growing very large this year so in some cases I've got lots and lots of growth and and the garden looks like it's absolutely teeming and teeming with things but as fast as the tomatoes are growing I'm pulling out plants to blight no I exaggerate it's not nearly that bad I mean I've got a lot of tomatoes growing and I'm just desperate for the tomatoes really and they're not ready because nothing is ripening nothing, nothing is going red yet I guess in a way I'm slightly disappointed. I can see it's beautiful. I can see all the growth. I can see all the life. Maybe I'm impatient. Maybe I'm thinking I should be having more food now and actually now is not the time when we have food. But it is the first week, second week of July and I feel like we should be harvesting more food. And it's such a shame that some of the things like the fruit trees have not got any fruit on them this year. I just, I don't know what's gone on. Last year I had less plants and I had more food. I am, however, very pleased to say that my, my cucumber plants, which share this area over here, so this arch here and that arch there now in the past years the cucumbers have grown all the way up over those arches and this year again they've just not grown the height they've only grown to maybe half the arch height however this morning i have harvested a fair few cucumbers now considering that last year i did not grow any managed to grow any cucumbers did i just say tomatoes cucumbers at all this is a good haul thank goodness I have something to show today um, that some tomatoes that came off of one of the plants I had to get rid of they're gonna go to fried green tomatoes um, another carrot to add to my selection these are the ones that I have yesterday so little tiny ones but not not bad oh he's a double one here you go what about this one that's not bad going is that for a thinner outer that's, that's the one I wrote it today. <laughs> so, to be fair, I'm probably being impatient. I need to wait for things to ripen. I am getting potatoes out of the garden, peas out of the garden, carrots out of the garden, onion out of the garden, garlic out of the garden, a few green tomatoes out of the garden, cucumbers out of the garden. So, I am... Um, lettuce out of the garden, chard out of the garden. So, <laughs> I 
I am harvesting at the moment. I'm just being impatient. I want my courgette, I want my squash, I want my tomatoes. And I'm not being patient enough. But first time, it looks like I'm going to be successful with corn. is a huge step forward for me. And actually seeing how much I can fit in a garden. Although I think next year I will focus on maybe a few fewer plants. Um, and see if I can focus on, on nurturing them and growing more from them. I might look into more blight resistant um, tomatoes so that I don't feel that upset of having to rip a plant out because it's got blight when I see that it potentially could have given me so many tomatoes and then let's not forget my my other huge project this year has been my chickens I mean I know it's I know I expected a little bit more but this said little chicken here that is running around i think he ended up being a cockerel which is going to be a real shame but he was he was born and bred on in our home he is a cross between chris the silky and perky the leg bar and raised by big mama the orpington this is M Myrtle and Hagrid, two extremely beautiful silkies, and I've got some more silkies inside. Here you go, ladies, have some of that. I've definitely gone a little bit more into the chicks this year, as well as hatching these two here. I bought some one day old chicks. Now, okay, when they're one day old, you can't tell if they're going to be cockerels. And we have ended up with six cockerels on the house, on the premises. But not all of them are cockerels. We have got some hens and they've been laying eggs. And these aren't the only two. But this is Fred and George, or Freddy and Georgie. And they are currently sitting on eggs that they and their sisters have laid, which is wonderful. And then we have all these little Pekings got called after Harry Potter characters. And this is Harry Potter. This is Ron Weasley. This is Professor McGonagall. And they... And obviously these two aren't laying, but they've now reached the age where they started to mate with McGonagall and um, Georgie and Frida. This is Chris from last year that I hatched and he has been mating and he's the father of the little chick you saw inside. And then there were the reds. So just before lockdown, I was gonna pick up five new um, red rescues from X commercials and I came back with nine. The other chickens are not that keen 